In the world of obstacle course racing, there is one race that is the ultimate test. World's Toughest Mudder. A 24-hour grueling race that tests your will and challenges you to the core. There is a different motivation for every competitor. These are their stories. I met Ryan through a high school friend of mine in a mountain bike race. I think we've been together almost five years now, I'm married for one year. Having her as you know a training partner, as a confidant, as a you know an assistant coach is super beneficial, and uh, I love sharing the process with her. It sounds crazy that you know my job is to just train, but I love it, and I love trying to find those last couple of percents and be the best version of myself that I can be. I will help my fellow competitors. The sport of obstacle course racing has really kind of blossomed in the last you know three four years, and it's become uh, more competitive and um, there's more exposure. But just to let people know, this is a 24-hour race. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is, what are you guys, crazy? Yeah, all the way from Canada, so I think it was worth the trip, though. I am here with Ryan Atkins, who almost doesn't need an introduction these days, but for those... That's really allowed that myself to kind of turn that into a career and uh, try to be um, as good at it as possible. Being a professional in this sport that's so new, a lot of people don't really consider it a le legitimate sport yet, but it definitely is one of the fastest growing sports out there right now. I guess this is my second year as a pro. Um, hope to do it as long as possible. It's definitely uh, a blessing to be able to live this kind of lifestyle where I'm essentially you know, paid to do all the fun things that I would be doing anyway. So obstacle course racing was originally kind of piggybacked off of, you know, military style obstacle courses. Confidence course training is designed to develop coordination, confidence and determination within each recruit. And they would have these set courses. There would be things like walls or cargo nets or crawls where you'd have to get down and crawl through mud. Someone got the idea that the general public would really enjoy these challenges took, you know, racing like a 5 or 10K or maybe a marathon and it added a whole other element to it. Now you have to not just be a runner, you have to be able to jump and you have to have balance and you have to have agility and you have to have strength. And I think that's the real beauty for me is um, it favors all around fitness and athleticism, kind of unlike I don't think any other sport does. I think that in a lot of other aspects of life, it's kind of like who you know. If you're really nice to this person, then maybe they'll give you a job. You know, with endurance sports, if you get to that finish line first, it doesn't matter who you know, you're gonna win. If you can take that hard work and that mentality and put it to other aspects of life, you'll really go far. It takes a long time to get used to, you know, how to pace yourself both mentally and physically. The eight hour races have definitely helped to prep me for World's Toughest this year. The most I did in eight hours was 45 miles. So I think for me, my goal is just to finish 24 hours. Um, I think it takes a long time to prepare your body for these types of events. And every time you do something like this, you get a little, a little better at it, you recover a little bit faster, your muscles get um, a little bit more used to it. But it takes years to sort of prepare your body to be able to run that length of time. To do these eight hour toughest mudder races is something that I've been working up to for probably four years now. This is my little 
little gym. Ryan made this um, when we first moved in, so it's pretty small <laughs> and cozy, but it does the trick. We have like these bars up here that actually spin. So this is like a set of monkey bars and then those ones that spin make it a whole lot harder. And sometimes I'll just like go down here and then come back this way with these things and like do a couple little loops. Normally I get it, but I kind of missed it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do like two laps of that or something. And then another thing that I do is just dead hang. So I'll just like hang like this for a minute. So I actually do it with my arms locked off because uh, Getting comfortable with this position is pretty helpful for obstacles. You'd be surprised how frequently like you're on an obstacle and all of a sudden you have to go like from this position like up to here or like even to here helps make obstacles a lot easier sometimes. This thing's really cool because it's kind of like a pass fail. Like there's no, there's no fake in it. Like you either do it or you don't, so. Yeah, it's good for pull-ups because it kind of, you have to focus on keeping it steady because otherwise she spins. <laughs> yeah, so if you're on an obstacle and like yeah. you have to get up to the next thing, <laughs> this is a really good practice for that. Yeah. Yeah, actually motivation is uh, one of the kind of hardest things to maintain, especially through a season, like an, an intensive season of a lot of racing. You, it's, like a, it's like a bathtub and you have so much water of motivation and every time you race you take a few scoops out of that. And you know, it does slowly fill back up, you know, with rest and with time down. And if you race too much, then your motivation will kind of drain out. <laughs> and for a big event like World Stuff is Matter, you need you need a, okay. a lot of motivation. So it's, it's always a, a struggle for myself to balance the training and balance the fitness and balance the motivation in order to come to races feeling excited and feeling like you want to give your all. I mean, sometimes all you can do is just take a little break and uh, wait for that desire to really test yourself and to really push yourself to come back. Okay. So do you wanna like look over what I have in here already? As much as I've been racing my whole life and kind of can put together my whole training plan, Ryan understands the science behind it a lot better than I do. So usually I'll put together a training plan and then have him sort of go over it and he'll tweak it. So having his input is um, so important to me. So what do you so. feel like your biggest uh, like weaknesses that you can get the most kind of benefits out of? I don't know, I was thinking about this when I made this and you were saying how like I could practice like obstacle proficiency being like faster at getting to them approaching those them, transitions them. but that's like a hard thing to practice unless i don't know like i go here and then out of the shed and do like sprints or like at the races yeah but i mean we only really have like this one race before world championships but that's just something like i don't think we have to like put that in the schedule just be practicing it like all the time i feel yeah. like for turnover like i i took out like all flat running yeah from my program we're gonna do some like mountain stuff this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Let's do two, let's do three hours Friday. Three and that'll hours be Friday, what, and that'll like, be like pretty, wait, pretty hard. That's our weight face TT? Yeah, we'll go probably do like 6,000 feet of vert that day. Maybe a little more. So it's like a big endurance slash like mountain running block leading up to Spartan World Champs and then we kind of like get the manifestation of that fitness there, which is like also like recovery and adapting to it. And then um, 
we do like some little sharpening things for OCR world champs. And then we've got like two weeks of, from like the 15th week and the 22nd week to kind of um, shift modes into like long steady efforts. So I'll be doing like some eight hour um, like training runs in those weeks to kind of uh, get myself ready. Um, and then it's just like, at that point, it's like you're two weeks out from world's toughest. So it's kind of like the haze in the barn at that point. And you're just, yeah. Yeah, I've won World's Toughest Mudder twice as an individual and twice as a team. I'm going back this year as an individual. This year I'm hoping to achieve 110 miles, so 22 laps in the 24 hour time frame. Training for World's Toughest Mudder is a lot of preparing all the ligaments and bones in your legs and in your body to withstand that punishment. And that's something that you have to build up over a long time. But then it's just kind of making your whole body bulletproof. You know, you, you have to have your grip strength that lasts the whole race, mentally lasts the whole race. Your core, you can't have any kind of weak back muscles or anything because anything that, any weakness in your chain, like, will eventually break down. I think what's really important is that you just be the best that you can be and that you beat your previous self. You set yourself a goal and you achieve that and then you set yourself a new goal and you achieve that. The striving for excellence, that's more important than actually achieving it. I think what motivates me to do these endurance races is just the places that your feet can take you when you can run that length of time. It's just such a cool experience, an unforgettable experience every time and I think every time I do one I'm able to push myself a little bit further. Last year my mileage goal was 65 miles, this year I would like to hit like at least 80. After you've done it once, you keep coming back and it's the most painful thing you've ever done. So it always like perplexes me that people decide to do it again year after year. It's almost like summer camp where, you know, you're a kid and you go to summer camp and you meet this fabulous cabin full of like fun people and you make best friends and stuff and you're, you know, you do everything together and you have this cool experience and then you come home and nobody really understands like what you've been through in this great time that you've just had. And if you could be guaranteed to go back again the same year and have that same cabin full of your best friends again and like have all those same amazing experiences again together, you'd be like, sign me up for it.